Hello everyone, today we'll review the Robsty Computation and Trade. And this is a model where we have internal economies of scale and we'll see how that leads to intra-industry trade. Uh, some basics before we get in. One is that firms produce differentiated products. Each firm is assumed to take the price charged by its rival as given. So they do not try to strategize their production on the basis of others' prices. They just take it as given. Right. When would a firm sell more quantity? And let's put Q as firm's sales. Right. So a firm is more likely to sell uh, a higher amount if there is an increase in total demand. Right. Uh, it's uh, sometimes referred to as the total market demand or the market size or market sales. So if the whole, if the demand increases in the market, the firm is more likely to sell more. And let's call this market size as S. Okay. Uh, what if other firms are charging a higher price? Well, if they charge a higher price compared to you, then you are likely to increase your sales. Right? And so the price charged by its rivals, we'll call this as P bar, P bar, which the firm takes as given. Right? What if uh, there are less firms in the market, uh, then you will increase your sales as well. We'll just uh, dip into this a little more uh, in the later slide. What about if the firm decides to increase its prices? Well, in that case, the sales would go down. Right. Let's look at what's happening when there are fewer firms. Now, you can think of the market demand or the size of the market as a pie. Right? If you have seven firms in the market, each firm gets a share of the pie. Right? Now some firms exit this market and you have fewer firms in the market, then everyone gets a bigger share. Given this, we can now or define what the demand function would look like for the firm. Right? So what did we say? We, well, we thought about this and we said, well, the quantity sold by the firm, which is Q, uh, is going to increase if the market size increases, which is S. So what we see is it enters with a positive sign into 1 by n. So as the number of firms increases, there would be a decline in its sales. Now look at this. This is capital S by n, right? So this is really saying if number of firms increases, there is a, you have a smaller share of the pie, S by n. Now P is your own price that you charge, well, firm's price that it charges, and it enters with a negative sign. The higher your price, the lower are going to be your sales. And P bar is the average price that is charged by the competitors, right? The more price they charge, negative, negative makes it plus. The more, the higher prices they charge, the higher would be your sales. Right? And so really what you look at is the difference between P minus P bar. Now B here is a constant. This is telling you how responsive are firm sales to the price differences or to the price the firm charges. What do we mean by economies of scale? Now we look at the cost side of things. Right? Well, uh, increasing returns to scale is really saying as you produce more, the average cost decreases. So as the scale of production increases, average cost decreases. So now how does this happen? Well, uh, let's think about this linear cost function. The total cost is the fixed cost plus the variable cost, which we write as marginal cost into quantity. Right? So what is the average cost? Well, average total cost is divide the whole cost function by quantity. So you have F by Q plus C, where okay, small c is the marginal cost. Okay? Now let's just assume a linear to cost function, so marginal cost is constant. But look what's happening here. As quantity increases, the average cost decreases because now the fixed cost is spread over a large amount of quantity. Right? Think about automobile industry. The plant size is huge. So what would happen if the if n increases, number of firms increase in the market? If number of firms increase, each firm has a smaller share of the market. So now the firm produces a smaller quantity. The scale of production for the firm decreases and hence the average cost would increase. In case of monopolistic competition, which leads to trade, as a result of this trade, consumers would benefit from a lower average price, uh, and this comes about due to scale economies. There'll be greater variety of goods, and you'll have intra-industry trade. Uh, these are the two equations that would define the equilibrium in the market. The first one is a relationship between prices and number of firms. The price is 
uh, inverse related to number of firms. As number of firms increase in the market, there will be more competition in the market, which would drive down the prices. Basically, the result comes from the fact that there's more competition in the market driving down the prices. The CC function gives you the relationship between the average cost and number of firms. When the number of firms increase, you have a smaller share of the market. Your production, your output decreases. As your output decreases, your average cost will increase. This arises really from economies of scale. Now, let's go to, let's draw these two equations uh, on the same graph and wherever they intersect, that would give us the market equilibrium. On the x-axis, you measure number of firms and on the y-axis, you measure average cost and the price. And let's draw the CC function first. Uh, this is your intercept constant plus n into f by s, and this is your slope, right? So if you draw this uh, CC function, this is the intercept, which is the marginal cost, and the slope of the function is given by f by s, right? So this is really of the uh, of the form y is equal to a plus bx, right? where uh, y is your average cost. Now the PP function, you have the same marginal cost uh, as the intercept, but it's a quadratic relationship and is a positive relationship between prices and n. So price is here and n is here and the PP function has a positive slope. Right? So let's uh, superimpose, sorry, let's superimpose that on uh, this graph, uh, P, uh, PP function. Now what this tells us is uh, if you have n1 number of firms, the price that you charge is P1. As number of firms increases, the prices fall, and this is really because of increase in competition. Right? Uh, the average cost function, the CC function, is telling you uh, when, the when the number of firms was N1, the average cost was AC1. When the number of firms increased to N2, the average cost increased to AC2. Right? So there's an increase in average cost as number of firms increase. And this is telling you that there are economies of scale. So as number of firms increase, you lose that economies of scale and the average cost increases. So this is uh, what the equilibrium condition looks like. In this case, the equilibrium is at point E, where you have N2 number of firms in the market, and the equilibrium price and average cost is P2 and AC2.